Parents, students, thank you for joining me today on our midweek encouragement. I want to give you just one event and then I want to jump right into our story coming from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 4. Remember to make sure to sign up for our upcoming beach retreat. It's the first weekend in May, May 5th through the 7th at Ocean Isle Beach, North Carolina. You don't want to miss it. Make sure to invite a friend. You can invite as many friends as you like. However, they need to be signed up online. Go to our website, fbcconcord.org, sign up there, and make sure you also list your friends if they are coming with you. And we are super excited that just right around the corner, the beach is on the way. I have a question for you, and, and this was the question that was asked of me when I was growing up in the 90s as a kid. Are you afraid of the dark? Now, some of you who think so much of your, your strength and your resilience would say, I am not afraid of the dark. There is nothing that can scare me or spook me. No one can jitter me. I am not afraid of the dark. Now, if you're familiar with that phrase, yes, it was a, a 90s TV show for kids when I was growing up. But also, just the concept of being afraid of the dark has been around for as long as mankind. Uh, the, the sense of being fearful if you're in the dark. I know even when I work around the church, if I'm doing something late at night or early in the morning, working on an item for ministry, and I'm all alone here, it is sort of eerie, just sort of leaves a, a little knot in your stomach if you're working and you're alone it can make you feel afraid of the dark. If you've gone to middle school or high school, you're probably familiar with the story of the adventures of Tom Sawyer. And in that story, Becky and Tom actually have this moment where they are afraid of the dark. They have gone off with some adventurers and they're going to explore caves. And if you remember that part of the story, as they're wandering through the caves together, they get separated from the group and they get lost in this cave and they can't find their way out and they cannot find the group either. And so as they are searching in the dark, it turns from apprehensiveness to anxiety and anxiety to fear and fear to dread, even to a point where even Becky in the middle of the story tells basically, Tom, hey, go off, see if you can find how to get out of here, and then come back to me, and then we'll die together. Truly, they are afraid because they are alone and in the dark, and there is no hope. You know, outside of Jesus, that's the reality for all of us. Without Jesus, we're in the dark. And I don't use that in a metaphorical way, but truly, spiritually, we are in the dark. We are blind. We are without hope. And truly, one day when we stand before God, if we don't know Christ, we will truly be afraid. But here's the reality, and here's the encouragement this day. That when Jesus comes on the scene, as seen in Matthew chapter 4, and he comes to the synagogue and he opens up the scriptures and he reads Isaiah and he begins to explain that the kingdom of God has come, then in this story we begin to realize that we are not hopeless. We no longer have to stay in the dark. We no longer have to be afraid of God. But in Jesus Christ, we are given the light, the good news, the hope that comes with Him. You see, the most beautiful part about the good news of Jesus is that Jesus comes to those who are in the dark. Yes, that includes the Jews in this story, but that also includes those who we call Gentiles, which is most of us. Most of us that I'm speaking to right now 
have no Jewish background whatsoever in their life. And yet, we are in the dark just as much as the Jews were at the time of Christ. And Jesus comes to them, and He is the great light. He is the one who takes off the spiritual blinders and brings sight to the blind. Yes, physically, but truly, He also spiritually. You see, through Jesus Christ, we have hope. Through Jesus Christ, we walk in the light as Christ is the light. In Jesus Christ, we possess the good news to bring into this dark world. And we have the opportunity to share that with our friends, our classmates, our teammates, those in our clubs, those in our home, those in our neighborhood. We have the chance to share that Jesus has come, that truly He is the light, that He lived a perfect life, that He never sinned in word, thought, or deed, that at the right time He gave His life in your place, in my place, for our sins, that He bore the judgment that we rightfully deserved in our darkness, and yet He did not stay dead, but on the third day He rose from the grave and He ascended up to a heaven, and one day He will return from heaven and reign and rule forever and ever. And my question to you is this. Number one, are you still in the dark and are you still afraid? I'm asking you that as a spiritual question. For if you do not know Christ, there is no hope. If you're not trusting in Jesus, you are still in the dark. And I encourage you, and I implore you, please, put your faith in Jesus Christ. Repent of the sin in your life and make Him the Lord and Savior of your life. And He will forgive you. And He will truly pull off the spiritual blinders. And you will be saved and forgiven and have the hope of eternal life. But second of all, if you know that Jesus is the light, if He's the only one that can cast out the darkness, what does that mean for you as a student? What does that mean for you as a Christian when you're at your school or at your home or you're on a sports team or you're with your friends? What does that mean? That if you possess the only light that can cast out the darkness, you know the message, you know the truth, you know what your friends need. You know what your neighbors need. You know what your teammates need. They truly need Jesus. They truly need to see the light of Jesus Christ working in your life. But also, you need to have the willingness to share about that light. So let me encourage you to read Matthew chapter 4, beginning in verse 12, going through verse 16. This is the scene in the synagogue following last week's story when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness. Read this story, be encouraged in your faith, but also be challenged. Jesus is the light. We can see a change in our school, among our friends, and in our world. But, again, but it begins with sharing the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's my encouragement to you today. I love you. I hope you have a wonderful day. Make sure to sign up for our beach retreat. It's going to be an awesome time together, and I look forward to seeing you soon. God bless.